Hello, I'm JW, and in this video, RCDs again. And uh, we had a look at a uh, RC in a previous video, which was that uh, Chinese flowery arm branded thing. And uh, that contained a fairly typical mechanism, which was uh, all electronic, so it had a little tiny uh, sense coil and a little small solenoid, and the actual uh, detection was all done by some uh, electronic device. But uh, of course, they weren't always made like that, and uh, in the past, when electronics were not available or hadn't been invented yet, the uh, coils things, of course, were much larger. Now, it's actually rather difficult to uh, locate such things, but uh, nevertheless, uh, here is one I found. And as you see, it's a pretty substantially sized piece of equipment. And uh, it's in this sort of black uh, plastic case with the uh, three buttons on the front. So uh, we'll have a look at this one and see what's inside. Now, this particular device is made by Chilton. And I've done a uh, video before on a Chilton uh, earth leakage circuit breaker. That was the Type D. And that particular one was voltage operated and therefore uh, totally obsolete and uh, not used anymore. Uh, this particular one is a type E, and as it says on the front here, it's a current operated style. And the uh, tripping current here is a rather unusual 500 milliamps and 240 volts, 60 amps, uh, and uh, 50 cycles or 50 hertz. And of course, Hungerford in Berkshire is where the company was located. And uh, so this is a fairly unusual one because uh, typically RCDs for uh, domestic premises will be a 30 milliamp one, possibly in some cases 100 if the uh, earth impedance was rather high, and uh, certainly 500 is uh, considerably excessive, and uh, to give an idea of how that would uh, be represented, if you took a 100 watt incandescent lamp and connected it to between the line and earth, this device would not trip because the current flowing through the 100 watt lamp would actually be less than 500 milliamps in that case, so uh, a pretty substantial amount of fault current needed to cause this thing to trip and as such it's actually fairly useless for protecting people or uh, livestock and whatever. Now on the front here we've got three buttons. The uh, large green one in the middle is uh, depressed in to uh, switch the thing on, and then you can uh, manually switch it off pressing the red button there if desired. And then the yellow button there is just to uh, test the thing to see if the uh, thing is actually working. Obviously it's not wired up here, so of course that doesn't do anything at the moment. Uh, this particular one is made in France, as it says here in the plastic moulding there, Let's get the angle on that. I'm presuming this sort of part here was a uh, removable plug in the uh, mould and you could just change it to uh, different countries of manufacture or something. Now this is quite a substantial thing, you see the depth of it there is uh, considerable. Uh, these squares in the background are uh, one centimetre, so as you see it's a considerable uh, thickness in the wall and of course uh, considerable width as well. Now the wiring on these would have entered in the top and bottom, so there's actually a big uh, chunk been hacked out there, and of course a corresponding big piece of hacked out there, and these covers are removable. Uh, notice it's got the little uh, section there where you could put a ceiling wire, and that will go through a corresponding hole in the actual screw there, so you could uh, have this fitted by your electricity company, and they could obviously seal that up to uh, provide some feeble attempt at tamper detection. Now these covers just slide on and so someone's obviously cut a massive piece out of there just to get the wiring in and then the terminals underneath. And the other end is pretty much the same sort of information there so just take that off as well. And again a very similar arrangement there. Notice it just actually slots into that uh, groove there and there's a corresponding piece here which uh, made it uh, quite a good fixing over there and just the single screw to keep it in position. Now terminals have got the two at the top here which is uh, there's two screws in each but it's obviously just one terminal here one here these are marked E1 and E2 and at the bottom got similar terminals there and they're marked S1 and S2. Now presumably S1 and S2 will be the supply E1 and E2 possibly the equipment or whatever it would supply although uh, you know differently then uh, please put a comment in the uh, comments section below but uh, that would seem to be the most likely but basically it's line and neutral in and line and neutral out whichever end that happens to be. Now this thing is obviously fairly old and is certainly uh, pre-digital uh, electronics so we won't be finding any uh, microchips inside this one so we'll just undo this and see what we actually have got. Not sure the exact date on this but uh, I would imagine uh, 1970s is the uh, Probably the absolute latest, maybe very early 80s, but uh, we're certainly talking uh, 
40 odd years ago. Now we've got some screws on the back here. This one, uh, just to hold this thing here for the uh, hook to secure it on the wall. And uh, there's a single screw at the bottom there, which probably holds in this back plate. So this metal part uh, just lifts off there. So it's just a uh, keyhole slot to hang the thing on the wall. There would have been another screw there just to uh, secure it at the bottom. Let's plate it on these sort of Paxilin or similar type of arrangements. So uh, just to cover there. And uh, here we are kind of inside the device. Now we've got the terminals coming at the top here and there's actually a sprung uh, mechanism here which is uh, just connected by those two small springs. So it looks to be a solid copper down at the bottom there. And we've got these heavy wires coming right across uh, one for each. And uh, this presumably is the test resistor here going between uh, one side and the other to create the required imbalance. And uh, this is absolutely colossal in terms of uh, size of resistors. Yeah, ruler in there, we can uh, see how big that thing actually is. So we're talking uh, sort of eight or nine millimetres diameter, which uh, say as far as resistors go is uh, pretty substantial and approximately uh, sort of 17 millimetres or so in length. Now of course these things aren't really designed to be uh, taken apart, so we'll have a quick look and see how we can uh, open it without the entire mechanism falling to pieces. So, now I'm going for the uh, screws here and over here and there's a, a small plug of material there which was actually over this screw at the top so uh, we'll go for that one as well so hopefully that will release the outer case and leave the mechanism and so on uh, intact as we don't particularly want the whole thing flying apart and uh, dismantling itself everywhere. Of course the purpose of this is to actually have a look at it and see how it works. Right, so there we have it, that's the uh, rod there is the yellow test button from the front there and obviously just presses down onto the contact over there. And we've got our green uh, sort of set button and the little red one uh, basically captive within the case there, just pressing that lever down on a, a spring mechanism. So the case itself is just uh, moulded black uh, Bakelite or some similar type of plastic. Not sure what kind that is. It's certainly uh, Bakelite style anyway, and again, fairly substantial uh, thickness there, with the uh, probably uh, several millimeters thick there. So uh, nothing particularly in there apart from the uh, little reset or uh, trip button there. So in the centre here is the green uh, button, which is obviously used to uh, switch the device and uh, close the uh, contacts like that. And the little uh, red button on the uh, case there would uh, press down to this bar in here and that obviously will uh, trip the uh, mechanism and cause the contacts to open like that. Now the contacts are here and I see these are substantial uh, brass uh, components and they're pressed uh, tightly together there with the springs and of course if we uh, just open those on the trip there of course they will spring apart so double pole switching there as you would expect, and notice the uh, substantial actual gap there. I mean, a lot of modern stuff only has a three millimeter gap, but of course that's uh, clearly far wider than that. And you just have a, a quick look there. We're talking uh, well, nearly ten millimeters, in fact, in the uh, terms of the width there, sort of eight or nine millimeters or so. And the contacts do have an extra uh, sort of button uh, welded onto each side there, so both on that side, and you've got a sort of a square corresponding piece over the other side over there. So these are the moving contacts here but uh, these up here are uh, the fixed contacts but they're actually uh, partly sprung as well as you can see there so obviously that would provide a uh, very good contact when the things were closed down so it's actually pressing them back against both springs to hold them tightly together and the uh, springs for those are those on the back which we saw earlier just on the uh, two sides there. Now the uh, moving contacts here have again got uh, fairly substantial uh, braids coming off of them there and you see on the back there you've got the uh, these are actually uh, plastic or Bakelite uh, posts there and they both move at the same time so obviously uh, common together there with a, presumably a plastic or some other bar going between them and the braids just come down underneath 
through the back and actually these uh, large black leads here just covered over with the uh, black plastic sleeving and they come over to these uh, two large uh, soldered connections there they seem to be, uh, be crimped on the top as well we've got the extra uh, solder possibly for the uh, resistor there and some uh, additional wires over that side but in any case fairly uh, substantially sized items and those come up uh, through here at the bottom there and also a corresponding piece uh, to see but uh, down in the bottom in there and uh, as you see the uh, fairly substantial size uh, windings here but of course these windings here have to take the full current to which this thing is rated and remember that's uh, 60 amps on the front so uh, if this thing was uh, running at full load you'd have uh, around 60 amps uh, to go through these coils here so we've got uh, four turns on this side and that goes through the middle there and comes out to the uh, terminal at the bottom there and the other side does likewise, it goes of course through there again four turns here and again the last one comes through and goes to the uh, terminal on this side so of course those will create the uh, magnetic field and we've got some sort of ferrite or uh, other magnetic core so going between the two uh, coils there and the sense coil will be this one here with these very much thinner wires because of course it's only uh, just picking up the voltage and those come off on these two yellow wires here which come through there and here and this is the trip solenoid here now this is the trip core here and as you've got those two yellow wires which come from the uh, winding around the core here and uh, what that there is actually a magnet it's actually you see, it attracts the uh, screwdriver and it appears that this trip uh, this actually repels at this bar i've got this in the uh, loaded position as you can see it's actually against there all the time so if I just lift that then that's what actually causes it to trip so it's quite an interesting uh, arrangement there because it seems that it has to actually repel the bar again there's a uh, that's actually magnetic you see it will uh, snap back there so it's actually using basically a permanent magnet and then an additional uh, coil on the outside which will then cause the bar to be repelled rather than just relying on a uh, fixed bar and then it being attracted by the coil when it's magnetized so sort of in reverse as it were so again it just sits there like that and then when the uh, force is enough it will open and cause the contacts to spring apart so this is very much uh, like the uh, theoretical model of the uh, RCD in that you've got the two coils there which carry the full current and of course normally they uh, wind in opposite direction so the net magnetic field here is zero but uh, when of one or of those uh, less or more than the other or to get that in balance a uh, magnetic field is created within the circular ring there and then this uh, very much smaller coil with the uh, fine wire of course the voltage is created there and again that connects between the two uh, wires on this uh, coil here because the uh, magnetic field there and that is what trips the device now I've just had a close look at the uh, test button arrangement and it's slightly uh, unusual in that we've got the uh, resistor here of course you've got your uh, line in neutral on these uh, two wires so uh, one end of it is here with this resistor it goes via the resistor here through to the yellow wire which comes through to the uh, test button contact and of course when pressed that actually comes back through to the contact here and that comes onto one of these uh, this black piece which is essentially this uh, red thin wire here when well, that goes up there it comes through the top here and there's actually another coil wound around the uh, magnetic form there underneath so these are the two coils for the actual uh, trip device here and then there's this other coil uh, wound underneath and the other end comes back along that same plastic uh, insulation there back to here and then connects over to the uh, terminal here so when you press the button there the uh, current follows via the resistor energizes that coil which then creates a uh, magnetic field here regardless of any imbalance on these ones so you're creating an artificial field here which then is basically picked up by the other one here causes this to uh, be magnetized repels the bar and trips the device so uh, it's not actually creating a current imbalance between the two it's uh, actually creating the magnetic field with an additional coil which is uh, say wound underneath the uh, actual sensing coil there so that's quite uh, unusual 
And terminals on these, uh, just at the ends here, they're quite uh, substantial ones. We've got two screws for each and a uh, moving clamp type of arrangement. So, of course, your wires would go in there between the screws there and just clamp down on top of each one. Same arrangement at the other end there. A uh, test label there, which is pretty from the uh, French manufacturer, just some uh, numbers about when it was made and uh, whoever tested and checked it over. And there's various other screws and things in the bottom here, like say some of these and that one in the middle, which actually come up uh, various places in here, like that one down there, which uh, probably to do with either testing it or uh, setting a particular tension on the uh, trip mechanism and so on. You see that one seems to hold that bar in place there, so uh, presumably something used when it was being manufactured to get it to uh, obviously latch and uh, release in the correct way. So that was a look at the Chilton Earth Leakage Circuit Breaker, the Type E in this case, and uh, that's current operated, not the uh, voltage operated type. Current in this case being 500 milliamps, which is uh, considerable as these things generated to around 30 or so, but uh, nevertheless they uh, obviously did exist in that kind of rating. And interesting to note that uh, bizarre arrangement with the test button, in that it's not the uh, resistor being used to create a current imbalance, it's just there to limit the current through an additional coil, so when you press the test button it just creates the magnetic field as if there was an imbalance and then of course that magnetic field is picked up by the other coil and then trips the uh, little solenoid thing and switches off the supply. So uh, certainly a strange way of doing it but uh, of course it uh, does work. So until next time, thanks for watching.